In this recording, I want to talk about inserting document controls. In the last recording, part two, we created a template. Let me just double click it here. Created a template that allows us to generate a quarterly report, and it's got some yellow placeholders in it. And we could highlight those and replace them. But then the user has to highlight, and they have to be careful. The highlighting might stick around if you're not careful. The bullets might get taken out if you're not careful. So I've got a, a better idea to make that uh, a little easier to use. The book doesn't cover this in this chapter. They, you've seen content controls because of a lot of the templates that are out there, a lot of the page borders and page or document or title pages, all those kinds of things have placeholders in them. Some of the headers and footers have placeholder actually called content controls in them. You've seen them, but the book doesn't talk about how to insert your own, so I think it's important. So I'm going to cover it even though the book doesn't, and yes, you will need it for the homework assignment. To insert those content controls, though, I need to modify the template. Now, I've got document one up here, which means I'm using the template. I used the template as a starting point for this document. I want to actually modify the template. In order to do that, remember from the last recording, you right-click and choose Open. And now I have opened my template, and I can make my modifications. What I want to do is replace the Enter Quarter with a content control. To insert content controls, however, there's a ribbon that's missing. There's a ribbon tab that's missing that we need to add. It's an advanced one. By default, Microsoft Word leaves it out. So I'm going to right click here. Oops, let's get to the ribbon. There we go. And I'm going to customize the ribbon. This dialog box pops up and notice that the developer tab is unchecked by default. That's the one we need to insert document controls. So I'm going to click on that and click on OK. And now I have a new developer ribbon that wasn't there before. So I'm going to open that developer ribbon. And these are the document controls. There are all kinds of controls. The only two we're going to be talking about in this class are the rich text control and the plain text control. The difference between the two is pretty subtle. I'll explain it as I insert them here. But how do we insert one of these things? First, we need to make some room. So I'm going to take my enter the quarter out of here, okay. add a space, yep. add a space, and then just before the quarter, I'm going to insert a plain text document control. Plain text document controls allow you to enter small amounts of text. That's what they're designed for. All the text has to be the same format. You can format the text. You can make it bold. You can make it red. But you can't format individual words or individual characters. You have to format the entire text that's in there exactly the same way. I wouldn't want somebody in this title, first, second, third quarter, to change the font at all, really, but if they did, I would want them all to be the same. So I'm going to insert a plain text control. One other thing that plain text controls don't allow you to do is they don't allow, and it looks like by adding that space I've lost my font here, so I have to make sure that I set that style properly. So while it's highlighted, I'm going to go home, I'm going to set on the styles, and I'm going to set this to a heading one style. No, this was the emphasized text style, and then we modified that a little bit more and made it bigger. So let's see if that's in the style box. Let's open up the style box, and here's my intense quote plus 14 font. So I'm going to make sure that my placeholder is the same. The reason I had that trouble was because there was no space there, so I added the space, and the space was, the, and I put this text in front of the space. So if I'd been a little more careful, I wouldn't have had to go through that stuff. Uh, it's not italicized. Uh, yes, it will be. Okay. So this is my placeholder. Let's go back to the developer tab. I can now customize this a little bit. What I like to do with every placeholder is, first of all, give it a title. So you click on Properties with your placeholder or your content control, excuse me, selected, and then give it a title. This is going to be my title for the quarter. Just a one or two word title like in a title of a document. Then there's a bunch of other things you can do. You can set a tag. I haven't quite figured out what that's for, so I leave it alone. Bound or the content controls can be displayed in different ways. I wouldn't leave. I wouldn't mess with that. Notice that this is shaded gray. If you want, you can shade it a different color. I wouldn't mess with that. Okay. Use a style to format the text that's typed into the content control. So instead of me changing the style of the content, content control, I could have done it here. 
but I like it better by doing it in advance because then it looks like the text that's next to it. When we're done, we can remove the content control when we type stuff. I don't recommend that for this circumstance. I don't use it very often anymore. Content control cannot be deleted. I don't want the user to delete this quarter. I want them to enter it. They can't. This will prevent them from deleting it. Either type text or they leave it or they try to delete it. That's usually what they do. In this case, you can't delete it. You can prevent the user from editing. Once they change it, they can't change it again. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And we can, if we want to, allow carriage returns inside this control. That box is there because we used a plain text control. Plain text controls, again, are supposed to be small amounts of text, so why would you need carriage returns? If you feel like you might, you can allow the user to. In my case, I don't want to. And now when I touch that, that content control, notice the title comes up here at the top. I like to see those. Plus, this gives me a handle that I can click on to select the entire object if there's a need to do that. So now our place or our content control is in here. I keep calling them placeholders and replacing the placeholders with content controls. But really, it's a placeholder as well. And what's nice about these is you can test them out right away. So if I click here and enter some text, it puts it in there. So I can test it to make sure that it's formatted right and everything looks pretty good. And if you click away from it, it disappears. And then when you click back, it comes back again. One of the things I did discover is if you take, well, after you're testing these, if you take all the text out and leave, then it puts the placeholder text back again, and unfortunately it reformatted it on me. So I'm going to click that again and change it to that style. Okay. So then I know it will fill in properly. The other thing you can do with placeholders is change this text that appears. So this text says click here to enter text. Well, if I wanted to, I could say click here to enter the quarter or just say enter the quarter or whatever I want. I can make it say whatever I want. To do that I have to select the control and then go into design mode. This is different than the properties. The text that appears here is part of the design mode that lets you change the text. Now, this is the name. All this stuff's going to disappear again but here's the text that's in there so we could say click let's just say enter the quarter. And then what's really cool about this is you can also shade this, highlight this, change its color so that it stands out like our placeholders do. This is optional, you don't have to do this, but it does make these placeholder content controls stick out. So I'm going back to the Home tab and I'm going to highlight it. And then I'm going to shift right back out of design mode. My advice is as soon as you've modified this, switch right back out of design mode. Now maybe you'll have six, seven content controls here. You want to change the text of all of them. Okay, then maybe you leave it on for a little while, but most of the time I'm dealing with one content control at a time. As soon as I'm done, <clears throat> excuse me, I switch out of design mode. Just makes it look a little bit nicer. Okay. So once again, I'm going to click there and I'm going to enter second and notice that the highlighting goes away as well. So any formatting changes you make to the text when you're in design mode only apply to that label that appears when the control is blank. As soon as the user types text, all that stuff goes away. I'm going to undo that. That way it goes back in again. So now here it says enter the quarter, and the user clicks, types, all this highlighting, but the formatting is still there. Okay, here's my introduction. I'm going to do basically the same thing. I'm going to take out the placeholder, and I'm going to insert, this time, a rich text control, because the introduction may be two or three paragraphs long. Remember that the... Um, Plain text control did not allow us to put multiple lines in unless we check the checkbox. And even there, it's not multiple paragraphs, it's multiple lines. It puts uh, line breaks in there, not paragraphs. So this might be multiple paragraphs, so I want to use the rich text control. And notice it doesn't look a whole lot different. It's hard to tell them apart. Once again, I'm going to Properties. And I'm going to say Introduction at the top here. Okay, and I want no style. I don't want it to be, the user can delete it if they want. If they want to leave the introduction out, that's fine. And I definitely want them to be able to edit their text. So I'm just giving it a title. Okay. And now it says click here to enter text. And to make my life a little easier, I'm going to leave that alone. Except I am going to go into design mode. And to make this stand out, I'm going to highlight it. 
and then switch right back out of design mode again. Okay. So there's the introduction. Here's click here to enter text. We click and type here's some text. Notice that it automatically switches to the font for the body, which is what we want. Right. So undo to put that back. Okay. So now there's that content control, and I'm going to need that very similar to all of these, so I'm going to now copy the content control. If you click it and click its title bar, you got the entire content control. You copy it to the clipboard and start pasting it all over the place. Control V. Got an extra line, so I'm going to get rid of that. Control V. And even though the text is kind of small, it will be the normal size font once we start typing. And I think I'll even put it here and then customize it. So this is going to give me a carriage return, but I can get rid of that when it's done. There we go. Click here to enter text. Here's the conclusion. Here's another. Click here to enter text. Don't want the carriage return. Paste. Got an extra star. So I'm going to pull that back. And finally, the last one here, paste, and get another. Now that one, again, put a star on it. I'm going to tell it to not add it to the list. And now I'm all set to go. So now I've replaced all of my placeholders with content control placeholders that should be a little easier to, for the user to deal with. But this one says introduction. They all say introduction. So now I'm going to go into the properties mode and notice a tag was inserted automatically. This is going to be the computer study. And that paragraph may not actually belong, but we'll leave it. And here's another one. Properties. Take the tag out. And so on. Okay, I'm going to just do the rest of them offline so you don't have to watch me do them in the recording. I'm going to go to this one though, and I'm going to change it, and I'm going to change its text. So I'm going to go to properties and type in city here. And I don't want them to be able to delete this one, otherwise, my paragraph's going to look like kind of funky. Okay, so they can't delete this one. Click on OK. And let's change the text. So I'm going into design mode and say click to enter the city. And now I'm going to save this. It's not completely done because I'd like to change oh, get out of design mode. I'd like to change the titles on some of these, but again, I'll do that. I'll tell you what, I'll just pause the recording and I'll come right back. Okay, so I have updated all of these now, and it gives a nice professional touch. When you click, you always get the right word, West, Midwestern, Northeastern. Click here to enter the city. Okay, and here, and here's some discussion items, and let's test that one real quick. And this will be item one, and then item two. And notice as I press enter and start a new paragraph, I get a new star. Okay, so let's undo those, put everything back, there we go. Now, one other thing, remember, just as a review, that the properties allow me to change the title and whether these things are deleted is probably about all you need to worry about uh, when you enter text or whether the user is allowed to delete these things. And the design mode allows you to change this prompt. Okay, so for the city up here, I went to design mode and change the prompt to say click here to enter city. Okay, so that's what design mode is for. And remember, I always turn it off. Remember, if you format text in design mode, that's only formatting the prompt. It's not formatting the text itself. As I typed stuff in this bullet, it came up in black. It wasn't highlighted, and it was the same font as the rest of the document. But what if I want this entire control to be boldfaced? Then don't go into design mode. Select the entire control to, by clicking on its title up here, and then make it boldfaced. So now it says click here to enter text, and when I type, it's already bold, and so is the next one. can't type, but it's bold. All right, so if you want to format an entire control in a certain way, just click on the control's name, oops, bold face, up here at the top, 
and that'll change the content of the whole thing. Now, if it is a rich text control, the user can still change that, right? Can still modify the formatting, but gives you something to start from. If you simply want to change the appearance of the prompt, then go to design mode. So those are handy tools. You use them in one of the assignments, and I use them a lot in many of my places. Remember, one in the tabs assignment recording in Unit 2, we talked about how we could use... Um, Now I remember what I remember what it was. Oh, we could use that to create memos and places where we want the user to fill in stuff. You can also use these placeholders in those kinds of documents. But this is a template, so now I've changed my template. And whenever I use my template now, here's my template. Double click it to use it. I get placeholders in all those places and I can click and type whatever I want. Click And just work my way down and it for most users that's very very friendly and anytime they want to they can come back and click and edit this text and remember individual words can be bold-faced if it is a rich text control